क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज रिले यूज फॉर द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ अल्टरनेटर अगेंस्ट द लॉस ऑफ एक्साइटेशन इज ऑप्सेट महो रिले ओवर करंट रिले डिफरेंशियल रिले एंड बकोल्स रिले क्वेश्चन इज आस्ट इन गेट एग्जाम इयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वी नो दैट इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोवाइड द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ अल्टरनेटर वी नीड टू एम्प्लॉय डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ रिलेज एंड इन केस ऑफ अल्टरनेटर वी नीड टू प्रोवाइड प्रोटेक्शन अगेंस्ट द फॉल्ट एंड ऑल्सो अगेंस्ट द एबनॉर्मल कंडीशन and here loss of excitation is a kind of abnormal condition now if you see the alternator so this alternator in normal condition it will supply both active power and reactive power to the grid so here it is a grid so alternator is connected to a grid so during normal condition it will supply both active power p and reactive power q now when there is a failure of excitation so this alternator it will have two inputs first input it will have from the prime mover it will have a input from the prime mover and also its field winding it will be supplied with the help of excitation system now in case this dc excitation fails if this dc excitation is failed then it will not supply the reactive power to the grid but instead it will take the reactive power from grid so direction of reactive power it will reverse and as prime mover input is intact it will supply the active power now here in this case whenever there is a loss of excitation alternator will supply the active power and take reactive power from the grid and during this condition its impedance will change and we are using offset maho relay in order to detect this condition we provide protection of alternator against the loss of excitation so correct answer it will be option a now how this offset mohor relay characteristic will look like so this is our r and x plane so normal mohor relay it will pass through the origin but offset mohor relay it will get shifted either in the downward side or in the upward side so this is the characteristic of offset mohor relay so within this trip and outside relay will rest so for loss of excitation we are using offset mohor relay so you can remember so loss of excitation we are using offset mohor relay now sometimes there might be loss of prime mover so in that case what will happen it will supply reactive power but in that case the active power it will take from the grid then directly there will be reversal of flow of active power and we are using directional relay so directional relay is used to detect the condition of loss of prime there is one more abnormal condition that is the unbalanced loading and whenever unbalanced loading is there there will be flow of negative sequence current in order to detect that condition we are using negative sequence relay so these are some of the abnormal conditions and we are using these relays to provide protection against the abnormal condition so here correct answer will be option a offset maho relay over current relay it will be used as a backup protection differential relay it will provide the primary protection for the alternator buckles relay it is used for the protection of transformer against incipient faults question number 30 which one of the following statement is not correct question is asked in esc 2023 the corona loss on the middle conductor is more as compared with the two outer conductors so this statement is correct because of the potential gradient in the middle conductor it is more as compared to outer conductor hence corona loss is more option b the corona loss is less in hilly areas than in plain areas so this statement is wrong this is not correct so our correct answer it will be option b now why corona loss is more in hilly areas rather than in plain areas so we can understand this so we know the expression for corona loss which is given by pc equal to 242.2 upon delta f plus 25 under root r by d v minus vc square into 10 raised to minus 5 kilowatt per kilometer per Now here in this equation, if you observe carefully, we can write that P C is directly proportional to V minus V C square. So what are the meaning of various terms here? Delta air density factor, F supply frequency, R conductor radius, D conductor spacing, 
V is the phase voltage, Vc is the disruptive critical voltage. So Pc is proportional to V minus Vc square. Now what is Vc? We know the formula for Vc. It is M0, G0, delta R, ln D by R. Where M0 is the surface factor, G0, it is the directic strength at standard condition, STP condition. Delta as I told it is air density factor. R is the radius and D is the conductor space. Now what is delta? Air density factor it can be given as 3.92B divided by 273 plus T where B is the barometric pressure in centimeter, T is the temperature in degree centigrade. Now what we can see from this? In hilly areas pressure is less, so B is reduced. So if B is reduced, air density factor delta it will be reduced. And if delta is reduced from this equation, Vc it will be less. And if Vc is less, so this term it will be less. Therefore, Pc it will be increased. So therefore, in hilly areas, as pressure is less, air density factor will be less, which means that corona will take place earlier. So for lower value of Vc, corona will take place. So Vc is less. So if Vc is less, corona loss it will be more. So corona loss in hilly area is more as compared to plain areas. So option B is not the correct statement. So here answer will be option B. If you see next to the rents increase the corona loss in transmission line. That is also correct because in the uh, rain humidity is more. And if humidity is more ionization it will be easier and Vc will be less. And if Vc is less corona loss will be more. The height of the conductors from the ground has its effect on corona loss. That statement is also correct. So here correct option will be option B. Next question number 31. When the bundle of conductors is used in place of single conductors, the effective inductance and capacitance will respectively increase and decrease, decrease and increase, decrease and remains unaffected, increase and remains unaffected. Question asked in ESC 2018. So what is the formula for inductance and capacitance? So inductance is given by L equal to mu naught upon 2 pi ln GMD by GMR or in case of bundle conductor we can write mutual GMD by self GMD. Self GMD is also known as a GMR and the capacitance is given by 2 pi epsilon naught upon ln GMD by GMR. Sometimes as I told GMD is called as mutual GMD and GMR is called as self GMD. Geometric mean distance, geometric mean radius. So units here it will be Henry per meter, here it will be Farad per meter. Of course it is for one phase, so per phase. So these are the expressions for L and C. Now we know that whenever we use bundled conductor GMR it is going to be increased. Now if GMR is increased, what will happen to L? It will reduce. Here if GMR is increased, overall denominator will decrease. That is capacitance will increase. So we can say that whenever we use bundled conductor, inductance will decrease, capacitance will increase. So correct answer, it will be option B. Question number 32. If the length of cable is L and its capacitance is C, now the length is doubled then its capacitance will be c by 4 c by 3 c by 2 2c remains same now we know the expression for capacitance so c is given as 2 pi epsilon l divided by ln capital d by small d farad per meter so here epsilon is the permittivity of material l is the length of conductor d is the diameter of sheet and small d is the diameter of conductor. So if we uh, remember, so if this is the conductor. So this is a question on cable. So inside there will be a conductor. Outside there will be a sheet for providing insulation and protection. So if you see the diameter of this conductor, then this is conductor diameter small d. And if you see the diameter of sheet, which is represented like this, so it will be capital D. So this outer part is the sheet and the inner part, it is the conductor. So this one is our conductor. 
So if we see from this particular equation, the capacitor C is directly proportional to L. So therefore, what we can write? C2 by C1 equal to L2 by L1. So C2 is C1 into L2 by L1. Now in first case, the capacitance is C and length is doubled. That is L2 is 2L and initial length is L. So this L and L, it will get cancelled. So we can write C2 as 2C. So if length is doubled, capacitance will also be doubled for the cable. So correct answer will be option D. Question number 33, a 40 MVA, 11 KV, 3 phase, 50 Hertz, 4 pole turbo alternator has an inertia constant of 15 seconds. An input of 20 megawatt develop 15 megawatt of output power. Then the acceleration is 60 degree per centimeter square, 65 degree per centimeter square, 70 degree per centimeter square, 75 degree per centimeter square. Question is asked in ESC 2018. So here what they have given the machine rating. So if we write the data, the machine rating S is 40 MVA. The line voltage is 11 kV. Frequency is 50 Hertz. Number of poles are 4. The inertia constant which is H 15 seconds and input of 20 megawatt as it is an alternator its input will be the mechanical energy mechanical power PM 20 megawatt. It provides output power which is the electrical output power 15 megawatt. And we need to find the acceleration alpha alpha equal to question. So how we can proceed? We know the swing equation which is given as PA accelerating power equal to m d2 delta by dt square m is inertia constant delta is angular displacement. Now this d2 delta by dt square is nothing but angular acceleration alpha. So we can write this as m into alpha. So remember what is alpha? Alpha is angular acceleration that is d omega by dt which is same as d2 delta by dt square. What is PA? PA is accelerating power which is nothing but PM minus P. So here how much is PM? 20. PE is 15. So PA it will be 5 megawatt. So from this equation we can write alpha as PA divided by M. So PA already we have found 5 megawatt but we don't know M. So how we can calculate M? How to calculate M? So M is related with H which is given by M equal to S into H divided by 180 into F. So 180 degrees into F. F is supply frequency. So how we have arrived at this equation? So we can quickly see that. So we know the kinetic energy of a rotating mass is given by half J omega square. So this is equal to half j omega into omega so j into omega is nothing but angular moment of m we can write this as half m into omega so that is equal to half m omega is 2 pi f so this 2 2 will get cancelled we will get m into pi f so kinetic energy is m pi f that is one expression for kinetic energy now another expression for kinetic energy we can write that h inertia constant is a ratio of Kinetic energy stored upon machine rating. Kinetic energy stored in megajoule divided by machine rating in MV. So H is kinetic energy upon S. So from this kinetic energy is H into S. So both are the expressions for kinetic energy. So we can write from this H into S is equal to M pi F. So from this we can write M equal to HS by pi f that is equal to hs by 180 degree into f. So here this particular equation we can derive easily from this. Now alpha we know as pa divided by m and m we know is hs upon 180 degree into f. Now we can put the values and we can calculate the value of alpha. So alpha is equal to PA that we have calculated as 5 megawatt that is 5 into 10 raise to 6 divided by M that is HS upon 180 degree into F. So 
so that will be equal to 5 into 10 raised to 6 divided by h how much is h given in the problem it is 15 second to 15 the machine rating s that is given as 40 mva it is 40 into 10 raised to 6 so divided by so that will go in numerator 180 degree into f how much is supply frequency it is 50 50 so if we simplify this so this 10 raised to 6 10 raised to 6 it will get cancel this 0 0 it will get cancel and if you calculate this so 15 for the 60 60 times 3 so 5 5 is a 25 into 3 so that will be equal to 75 degrees per second square so our value of alpha so the value of alpha it will be 75 degree per second square so correct answer it will be option d so we start by using the swing equation pa md2 delta by dt square this term is nothing but alpha so therefore alpha is equal to pa upon m we don't know what is m but m and h they are related by using this particular equation okay, if the answer is asked in degree if it is asked in radian so in place of 180 degree we can keep it as pi radian moving to question number 34 power transmission capacity of a high voltage line can be increased by so we know that power transmission capacity p is given by ev by x if you want to increase p we need to reduce x so increasing the resistance which is not correct increasing the inductive reactance will reduce this is also not correct so reducing the effective series reactance that is the correct answer reducing the shunt admittance which is also not correct so question number 35 the time interval needed for a search to travel to the end of 600 km long overhead transmission line is 6 second 2 second 20 millisecond 2 millisecond so we know that the expression for the velocity is given by v equal to under root 1 upon under root lc what is l u naught upon 2 pi ln d by r dash what is c 2 pi epsilon naught upon ln d by r now how r dash and r are related r dash is 0 0.7788 times r so we can assume that r dash is very close to r if you put these values so v will be equal to 1 upon under root u naught upon 2 pi ln d by r into 2 pi epsilon naught upon ln d by r r dash and r dash r dash and r are very close to each other so ln d by r ln d by r will get cancelled 2 pi 2 pi will get cancelled so we will get v as 1 upon under root mu naught epsilon naught now what is mu naught mu naught value is 4 pi into 10 raise to minus 7 in three per meter epsilon naught is 8.85 into 10 raise to minus 12 farad per meter if you put these values you will get v as 3 into 10 raise to 8 meter per second so that is the expression for velocity of the electrons so 3 into 10 raise to 8 now what is given here that distance need to travel as 600 kilometer how much time it will take now we know the basic expression for velocity that is distance upon time from this time will be equal to distance upon velocity so distance is 600 kilometer so 600 into 1000 converting kilometer to meter and velocity is 3 into 10 raise to 8 so if we simplify this 3 1 the 3 3 2 the 6 so that is equal to so 2 into 10 raise to 5 into 10 raise to minus 8 so that will be equal to 2 into 10 raise to minus 3 that is equal to 2 milliseconds so the time interval needed for a search to travel a distance of 600 km it will be 2 milliseconds so correct answer is option d so remember these equations v is 1 upon root lc v is 1 upon under root mu naught into epsilon naught and v for a free space it is 3 into 10 raise to 8 meter per second this is the basic expression for velocity that we know thank you